Do you find crinkly dollar store tissue packets awkward and uncomfortable? Do you find it uneconomical to use a fresh tissue every time you merely want to dab your eyes? Have you ever been washing your hands only to find out there isn't any towel? Do modern public hand dryers make you want to run out screaming because they're just so loud? Then forget about new and improved. Try history approved handkerchiefs. Let's talk handkerchiefs. The staple accessory of any period drama, handkerchiefs have been used as tokens of affection, makeshift bandages, white flags, rucksacks for wanderers, disguises for bandits, and if you're in Othello, a symbol of fidelity or a tool of destruction, depending on which character you're playing. Now, this video is not going to be a deep dive into the history of handkerchiefs, as I am not a professional historian by any means. I am merely a lover of all things sewing and history who wanted to talk about an accessory that really should be more mainstream again. Rather, this will be handkerchiefs at a glance, followed by a tutorial on two easy ways to make them. Handkerchiefs have been around for... ever. There are records of them being used all the way back in the Roman Empire, and there's even artwork from the Chu Dynasty of 1122 BC depicting what is quite possibly a handkerchief. They were used throughout the Middle Ages, more as a head covering than a face cloth. They were a wildly popular accessory in noble portraits for centuries, and there's even a story that is almost certainly fictional about Marie Antoinette once being so upset that she wiped her eyes from a bit of lace torn from her dress, supposedly sparking the invention of the handkerchief. Again, most likely fictional. In the Victorian era, there is even a handkerchief code for flirting at a distance, like places like the opera or balls, but never church. Drop in your handkerchief? Let's be friends. Over the shoulder? Follow me. Twirling it in the right hand? Friend zoned. Handkerchiefs were used by people of every status up until the mid-1900s, but by the late 1920s their popularity was waning, and now in 2021, with the exception of the mostly decorative pocket square, they're all but a relic of the past. Well, in most western cultures anyway. In Japan, people carry around tanugui, which are essentially handkerchiefs, on a daily basis, and use them for a variety of everyday tasks wiping hands, mopping brows, tying it up and doubling it as a little bag, the uses are endless, and they come printed in all sorts of beautiful designs. I got this one off Etsy, which I will link below. So why did an accessory that was faithful for centuries suddenly become a relic of the past? One word, Kleenex. Literally, the company Kleenex. Their tissues were originally marketed as a way to remove cold cream, but their ad campaigns were a total smear. They advised people not to carry a cold in their pocket and that cleaning filthy handkerchiefs was a revolting job. The worst job on earth. By the 1980s, everyone was using tissues and handkerchiefs were relegated to period movies, antique markets, and grandparents' bedside tables. In fact, until the day he died, my grandpa carried a handkerchief with him everywhere he went. Except for funerals, where he carried two. One for himself and one for someone in need. Now I find it remarkable that with the current social push to be more sustainable and renewable and keep things out of landfills, that the handkerchief has not made a roaring comeback. We already have washable fabric versions of other items that most people consider disposable. So why not handkerchiefs? With aesthetics like history bounding on the rise and a growing number of people looking to the past for their dress and decor, why haven't handkerchiefs become more mainstream? I got nothing. I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer. If anyone does have any idea, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear other people's opinions. 
why would or wouldn't you personally use a handkerchief? So if you've made it this far, gotten past my ramblings, and want to join me in bringing handkerchiefs back, good for you. You could find them at antique markets, like these ones, originally sold at Woolworths at 25 cents a pair, or Etsy, or fancy clothing stores, or if you're sewing inclined, you can make your own. I promised a tutorial, and now I'm going to deliver. So grab some soft cotton, linen, or silk, and let's get sewing. The first method I'm showing is the modern method. I'm using some quilting cotton cabbage, which you may recognize if you watched my last video. I love this geeky Doctor Who themed fabric and thought it would be perfect for a funky handkerchief. Handkerchiefs are most commonly 12 inches by 12 inches, but being limited by scrap fabric, I'm making this one a little smaller. Whatever size you decide on, add half an inch seam allowance all the way around. Once it's cut out, fold in your hem, as small as you can, and carefully iron it down. Watch your fingers, but ironing the initial fold will make hemming it much easier. Then fold in the hem once more to enclose the raw edges and iron it down again. Pin the folded hem down and move on to the next corner. Once all the edges are folded in twice and pinned down, you're ready to sew. When you reach the corner, carefully pivot the handkerchief around and just keep going down the next side. The corners can be a bit finicky as there are more layers of fabric, but just ooch it along and you'll get past it. And you're done! It's that easy! From cutting the fabric to finished handkerchief, this project took around 30 minutes of work time. Totally an easy project for a quick little sewing day. Next I'm going to show you how to make a handkerchief with more of a historical feel, hand sewn using linen. This one is going to be larger, the more traditional size of 12 inches by 12 inches, which means cutting a square 13 inches by 13 inches. Because I want a precise, proper square, I'm going to use the traditional method of thread pulling to make sure I'm cutting exactly on the grain. To do so, I'm making a small snip right where I want to cut. Then, using a pin, begin pulling out a single thread along the grain. This takes patience and a good eye, but it's not too hard to get the hang of it. If you're gentle, you can gather and pull the thread out. It will probably snap at some point and you'll have to go digging for the end, but it leaves you with an easy guide of where to cut. Once you have your square, it's time to stitch. I'm using fine linen thread that I got from every historical costumer's favorite shop, Burnley and Trowbridge. I'm also coating the thread with a bit of beeswax to help it stay stronger and not tangle. For this handkerchief, I'm doing a rolled hem. This is particularly easy on linen, especially if you roll it between your fingers until the raw edge is enclosed. Fell the edges down with tiny whip stitches, working all the way around. Now you have a basic plain white handkerchief, but what if you want something with a little more oomph? For this one, I decided to go with a trim of backstitched blue silk thread and some tiny vintage lace from my grandmother's house. 
I attached the lace with silk thread, whip stitched on, catching only the underside of the rolled hem. I also made one with a little bit of drawn thread embroidery. I pulled three to four threads along the grain on every side, instead of one, about two inches in from the hem. I used some lovely pearl silk thread for my embroidery and caught every five or so threads, pulled them tight, and then tucked the thread through one thread just below my new little loop. It totally makes more sense watching it than me trying to explain it. Once the embroidery was completed, I hemmed it the same way as the lace handkerchief, pressed it crisp and smooth, and it was ready to use. So there you go. Two methods of making handkerchiefs, plus a couple ideas on how to decorate them. I hope we bring handkerchiefs back into popularity, as there's so much room for individual expression with them. They can be as utilitarian or as fancy as you want, as historically accurate or as modern and geeky as you want. The options, dear friends, are endless.